Today is a revolutionary day, and we are going to be talking today about Chris Oyakilome and the God of Mammon. But it's not just today we are going to be talking about this. We are going to be doing this for as a series. It's going to be a series that we are going to be doing for the next 10 days. So um, just the same as we did with uh, Pastor Deboe. So we are going to be doing an analysis of uh, the teachings of Chris Oyakilome and his Christ Embassy Church. It's going to be a, a kind of um, review of their teachings and practices that will show you that that is not a church at all. At best, it's a personal empire that is dedicated to Mammon. So, um, but uh, you don't believe me. You don't need to believe me. Let's, let's believe the facts. We are going to look at the, some videos. I hope they will not remove all the videos from the internet before I get to all of them. But uh, <laughs> we are going to be playing some videos and those videos and we are going to analyze them and then you can believe what does the video say and what does the Bible say. Before I start showing you the video of Chris and analyzing everything, let me start by saying that I love Chris. You know, I don't know, I don't care what what are the wrong things he's done or he's doing or he's practicing. My whole aim is that maybe through my effort, we'll be able to help him to correct some things and to be able to come back to the mainstream and come back to Christ. Uh, I think maybe it will not be a big secret for me to say this because uh, she had, it's, everything is on the internet. Of course, most of you know that uh, Chris is divorced with his wife. And that's a tragedy, and nobody should rejoice about that. That's, that's a personal tragedy, right? But what I want to talk about is the fact that is the statement that Ani, Pastor Anita said to some very close people that I to, to them that I uh, got to get information from. And this person that is very close to the two of them, both to Chris and Anita, is a person that they both regard as a mentor. And what, uh, when this mentor was trying to convince Reverend Anita to stay with Pastor Chris and not make, and not, you know, divorce because of the scandal that could bring and because of all the noise, uh, she said for 15 years she had actually endured and paid a lot of price to close her eyes at a lot of wrong things that were happening, uh, you know, in their family. So I'm not going to go into that because this, my uh, expose, is not about personal life and it's not about even personality. It's all about doctrines and practices. But there is a statement that uh, Anita made to that man who is like a mentor to her. And she said, Bishop, I wouldn't have left. I would have stayed with Chris if not for one fact. I discovered that Chris is not, despite all the many, many points, many, many things that were very wrong as a Christian, she said she would have, she would have even endured that. You know, she, of course, in, when, when she filed for the divorce in the court, she's talking about multiple affairs that her husband is, and that's the, the court thing. And she said she would have endured that. So that woman should be a golden woman. I've never met her, but for enduring all that for 15 years. But she said, the only reason why I'm living now is because, that, I mean, the only reason, the reason why I endured that for 15 years is because I was thinking that it is, it is still, it's just a weakness. And, but, you know, Pastor Chris, it's still possible to bring him back to Christ. But now, the reason why she had now decided to leave is that, according to her, Pastor Chris has totally left Christ and doesn't have anything to do with Jesus Christ anymore. He's left Christ. He's abandoned Christ. And that she doesn't see any way or possibility of bringing Pastor Chris back to the path of salvation. And that's why she just thinks that, no, if nobody can help him. I mean, she couldn't help him. Maybe God could help him, but that she couldn't help him. So what I'm saying, what I'm doing, and the reason I'm doing this, is that maybe this could help him. Or maybe the shake or the shaking of his empire or the crumble of his empire could save his soul. But my goal is not to crumble the empire. 
My goal is just to help him realize that something is terribly wrong and to help him come back to the doctrine. I don't care what he's doing in his private life. I'm talking about doctrine now and practices, okay? Because that is what affects the body of Christ. And that is what affects uh, the image of Jesus. And that is what, you know, what is affecting the destiny of many, many believers. So, uh, and uh, but besides Pastor Chris, I'm going to do this series on Oyedepo and uh, Matthew Ashimolowo as well. And people right now are very angry at me. Especially, I mean, people are calling me from my old friends and people are saying, I'm hearing news, people are saying that Pastor Sunday has lost it, I've backslidden, I've gone into error, I'm insane, and all kind of rumors and news and talk is going on there. But I must do what I must do. It, because I know it is right. Even though the whole world might be saying that I've gone a wire and I've lost my mind. But I want to show you a video today. I will not start with Chris. I'm going to start with a very interesting video that somebody sent to me. That will convince all of you, even if it will not convince you. But it's a danger that is, by the, and that is on the way for Nigeria right now. Nigeria is at the verge of a big danger of what is demonstrated and shown in this video. We must also watch this video, then after this video, we'll come back to Pastor Chris. Because if we don't do something urgently now to stop this downslide of the Nigerian church, in the next 50 years or 30 years, Niger we will forget that there was ever a revival in Nigeria. We will forget that Nigeria was ever a Christian country. We will forget that Nigeria ever had millions of people, that Nigeria ever had these churches that were, that were having millions of people. Nigeria will definitely become a talking, not because of the Muslims, but because of the Christians. Right now, everybody in Nigeria is afraid that Nigeria will become uh, like Turkey. And that uh, because Nigeria is going to become a Turkey, that, is, uh, that we should fight the, Mus the Muslims and the terrorists, that we have to do something. No. We, we ourselves, we hand over Christianity and the church and Nigeria to the Muslims without a fight. The Muslims will not need to do anything. What we do against the scriptures and against the word of God itself is enough to make the Muslims and um, take over Nigeria. And secularism and atheism will take over Nigeria if we don't right now stop the downfall of the gospel in our country. Let's go ahead and have a look at the video. Just become a Muslim. Some people, when you hear someone say, I am a Muslim, I want to accept Islam, people will say the person is doing because of money. As a matter of fact, where I am coming from is where there is money. When you hear the former governor of a boy state, Dr. Sam Ebu, he is my uncle. So, my father is a business superintendent of a church in Abuja, but I will not mention the church. No, no, for security reasons, yes. So, one of the reasons why I want to tell you, I was pastoring in Abuja, and I was one of the persons that hated Islam. As a matter of fact, when I was a Christian, I cannot give indulgence with what my pastors here have given. I cannot sit in the midst of Muslims to argue speaking. But one of the things that happened, I have an encounter with Allah. Not that somebody came to preach to me and said, become a Muslim. But it came to a time, there is something that transpired between I and my general overseer. And that thing that transpired, we did not fight. He loved me more than any other pastors in the church. But it's one thing he asked me to do. I say, I will not compromise in doing it. Instead of compromising in involving in this atrocity, I will better live the Christianity. That night, I slept. I have an encounter. The encounter I had was I saw five persons. I was sitting in the middle. And they were having beers. Some of them just were. Stop. Let's, uh, I want us to do some analysis of what we are hearing so far. 
This is a pastor. This is a Nigerian Igbo man. I mean, and for Igbo man to become a Muslim, that for me is a big tragedy. It's a big thing for Nigerians, if they know. Niger East Nigeria is the Igbo land, Eastern Nigeria. And that Igbo land is our, is our last hope in Nigeria. It's our stronghold. It's the stronghold of Christianity in Nigeria. The eastern part of Nigeria is our is the hope of Nigeria in the sense of is the most concentrated part of Nigeria with Christians. It's the most Christian part of Nigeria. So it's the stronghold of Christianity in Nigeria. The Igbo land is the stronghold of Christianity. An Igbo man is not born. It's very difficult to find an Igbo man that is born a Muslim. But this one I, I definitely is not born a Muslim and he's saying it. This man was not just born a Christian. He was a pastor. This man was a pastor. Of, not of Catholic Church. Not of you no know, mainstream Protestant churches. Of Pentecostal Church. This man was... So what the, the evil that the Pentecostal churches are bringing to Nigerian society, our own hands will drive away all these all people from Pentecostal churches. We ourselves will drive them to Islam, if we are not careful. We, with our own hands, will drive all these people to Islam because of the atrocities in Christianity. If anybody doesn't t t say, if we don't come and out and say, what these pastors are practicing is not Christianity, oh, please, guys, your man, if anybody has been able to tell this man that what you saw your pastor doing is not Christianity, that is not Christianity, he would have known that, no, the thing he thought was wrong was not Christianity. That was not Christianity. Because if you brand Christianity as the Nigerian version of Christianity, if you say that is Christianity, everybody will say, if this is Christianity, I don't want to have anything to do with it. But unfortunately, the younger Nigerians who are 30, no, who are below 30, 40 years old, they don't know what Christianity means, means or looks like anymore. Because they were born at a later time. Just like the ones who are 50 years old, who are below 50, don't know what Nigeria is when Nigeria used to be one to one with one dollar, one dollar, one naira and dollar, and one, one dollar and one pound used to be one. But, but Nigerians don't remember that. Nigerians don't remember, Nigerians don't remember that because they were born. So they don't know that Nigeria. Just like they don't know that Nigeria, so the same way the Christians that are below 40 in Nigeria now, they don't know that Christianity that we used to know in the 70s and 80s. So because they don't know that Christianity, they will now say, is this Christianity? We would rather be an atheist. Is this Christianity? We would rather be an, uh, a Muslim. And that is why right now, urgently, we, that's why I did a series, the urgent measures to rescue the African church. Urgent measures to rescue the African church. And these things that I'm doing, it is still part of the urgent measures to rescue the African church. Can you see all the atrocities that Pastor Adeboye himself is perpetrating, you have seen that too last week. But this one that I'm going to be handling this week is worse than Pastor Deboe like 100 times. Can anything be worse than what we have seen with Pastor Deboe? It's like nothing could be worse. What Pastor Deboe was, what he is perpetrating in his ministry is like the height of, you know, ungodliness and unrighteousness. And, but, and at the anti, anti Christianity. But right now, but this one I'm going to be dealing with this week, this week is much worse than that one. But if that one is, if that, uh, if that is worse, if this one, Pastor Chris, is worse than what we saw last week, then there is no Christianity in Nigeria. And if we don't stop and say, no, this is not Christianity, oh, oh God, this is not Christianity. Let's, stop, let's tell you that this is not Christianity. Then every, all these youth, they go into that church and they begin to see all the atrocities that are going on in the churches. And they will say, no, we don't want to have anything with this Christianity. We would rather be unbelievers or we would rather go and be Muslims. And then all kind of demons will be giving them dreams and revelations like this one is talking about right now. Okay, let's start all over again. Some people, when you hear someone say, I am a Muslim, I want to accept Islam, people will say the person is doing because of money. As a matter of fact, where I am coming from is where there is money. When you hear the former governor of Epoch State, Dr. Sam Ebu, he is my uncle. 
So, my father is a business representative of a church in Abuja. Stop. His father. Did he say his father? Let, oh, no, let's, let's hear that a, a little bit. Yeah. Part of a point state, Dr. Sam Ebu, is my uncle. So, my father is a business representative of a church in Abuja. Stop. But that is his father. So, his, his, uh, his uncle, he was a governor in Nigeria. Which means this guy is even from the upper class of Nigeria society. He's from the elite. With money, with influence, with family name, and that didn't stop him. The love of money didn't stop him. The reputation of his family didn't stop him to go and accept Islam. The scandal didn't stop him. We are in trouble, guys. We need to stop the evil that is called church in Nigeria right now. We need to stop the evil that is called church in Nigeria. If we don't stop this evil, we are a goner as a country. We are all going to be Ismala, Isma, 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 Ismalized or Islamatized or whatever. You know, we are going to become Islam country very fast. Everybody is going to turn to other gods. And his father is a super, uh, 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 geo or, you know, super, you know, a big man in the church world, in Abuja, of a big ministry in Abuja. His father, general superintendent. That is like Gio. And he turned his back because of some atrocities that he saw in the church. Let's continue. And I will not mention the church. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> For security reasons, yes. So one of the reasons why I want to tell you, I was pastoring in Abuja and I was one of the persons that hated Islam. As a matter of fact, when I was a Christian, you see, he was one of the persons that hated Islam. And that is one of the reasons he became an Islamic person today. Why? Because it's the law of the opposite. Anything that you are fighting, you are not, that's why Jesus said, you are not called to hate. Don't hate anybody. But the Nigerian church is to blame for this man's conversion. Not just his pastor. Because the whole Nigerian church is teaching Christians to hate Muslims. We are, that is not Christianity. Any church or any, any doctrine that teaches you to hate your enemy or to hate other religion or to hate Muslims, you are not a Christian. That is not Christianity. And since that is the Christianity that is practiced in Nigeria, that is the Christianity that most Nigerians believe in, they have not known Christianity. They have not known Christ. And that doctrine alone to hate your enemy and to hate the Muslims, that doctrine alone will backfire us. That doctrine alone will backfire. And more, maybe one day I will do a, a series on, most, on Islam and on the rise of Islam and the reason why, you know, only, you know, only, I don't know, I don't, nobody should be a Muslim. I have a series like that, why nobody can, should be a Muslim. Anybody in their right sense, after they finish listening to me, they will know there is no need to be a Muslim. But this guy, was a pastor of a charismatic Pentecostal church. And because he didn't know Christ the way Christ is. Because Christ is not the Christ that hates your enemy. Christ is not Christianity that says that hate Muslims. But he was a pastor and he hated Muslims. And I will tell you that he's not the only one in Nigeria like that. I will tell you that most of these pastors in Nigeria, in all these charismatic churches, they hate Muslims. Especially Southerners. Now, I, I still know that there are some northern Christians who are still real, and they love Muslims. Even though they are the ones that are being killed, they are killing them, but they love Muslims. They love their enemy. But the South, this Christian South, South, they have taught us that Islam and Muslims and Ausas and Fulanis are our enemy. And that doctrine is what is, is going to backfire. Just like people say, for example, they hate gays, and then they discover gay has become their mayor. Gay has become their president. They hate women. Women shouldn't have votes. And by the time the women shouldn't wear trousers. And by the time you discover women are now the prime minister. Women, you don't hate anything. We are not called to hate. Anything you hate will come back to hurt you. We don't hate anything. We don't hate people. We hate sin. We hate unrighteousness. But we don't hate people. We love people. 
We love enemies. But let's continue hearing this guy. I cannot give indulgence with what my pastors here have given. I cannot sit in the midst of Muslims to argue something. But one of the things that happened, I have an encounter with Allah. Not that somebody came to preach to me and said, become a Muslim. But it came to a time there is something that transpired between I and my general overseer. And that thing that transpired, we did not fight. He loved me more than any other pastors in the church. But it's one thing he asked me to do. I say, I will not compromise in doing it. Instead of compromising in involving in this atrocity, I will better do the Christianity. Stop. You see, he said he would better leave Christianity or not because he had an encounter. You see, he didn't have an encounter until he was disillusioned. It, it was something that happened between him and his pastor, Gio, his general superintendent or general overseer that told him to do something that his conscience would not allow him to do. He said, rather than doing this thing, I would rather leave Christianity. So it is the atrocities. It is the atrocities that are happening in churches. You see, the, the people, the crowd right now, who are still uh, go coming to those churches is because they are not close enough to see the atrocities that are going on in the system itself. Like, for example, if you are a member of Redeemed Church or uh, Christ, uh, Christ uh, Embassy and you are not in the inner caucus, you might not know what's going on. That is, but this man was already in the inner caucus and he already knew what was going on. And by the time he began to encounter that, because the pastor loved him more than everybody else, he could begin to open up to him and ask him to do some compromising thing. And the man said, I would rather leave Christianity. And once he made that pronouncement with his mouth, that I would rather leave Christianity, he has cut off himself and he opened him from protection and he opened himself off to the spirits. And that spirit came and brought Islam to him. It's a spirit, it's a familiar spirit that brought to him that no, Allah, but Wakubara, whatever he said, he got in the dream. I slept. I had an encounter. The encounter I had was I saw five persons. I was sitting in their menu. And they were having beers. Some of their beers were bigger than my own. Some of their beers were like our mother. And just the way our mother embraced, they tied their tobacco. And they surrounded me. Then we are reciting La in La in La 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 So in that class, I was also reciting La in La in La 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 in La La in La La My wife slapped me. Come on. He said, "What are you saying? You are singing Muslim song." You see the way these Muslims are happy. They are satisfied. They are gratified that, you see? They are, it's not just the conversion of this man alone, but the satisfaction, the affirmation is giving them Islamic faith. And the affirmation is giving them, you know, you know, Islam, Islam, Muslims, that yes, you know, we know that Christianity is not the way. Now they are pastors, they are leaders, not just me members, leaders are the ones coming. They are pastors are the ones coming. Because the man saw atrocities in his church with his geo. All these atrocities are everywhere, almost in every church in Nigeria. What we are calling church and Christianity in Nigeria is not Christianity. And like I'm saying, I'm going to repeat again. That is why I've done, I'm doing a lot, going through a lot of sacrifice to do what I'm doing. But the last one I've just launched is the mentorship program. I'm paying a lot of you know, expenses to make sure that everybody that wants to know the truth, what Christianity is all about, want to get their brain, you know, you know, detox from the Nigerian Christianity. You want to know what Christianity is all about, that everybody will be able to afford it. So I made that mentorship class for free, even though it's costing up to $3,000 per person. But for everybody, we are going to pay for it ourselves. And it is a, a program of detoxification for you to know Christ for yourself, to know how to walk with God, how to be a friend of God, and how to have personal relationship with God. So if you have no yet enter into that program, the mentorship program, please go look for it. It's easy. Just go to my blog, www.sundayadelaja. That's my name, blog. It has to be one word, sundayadelaja.blog.com.
sundaycoach.com slash mentorship slash mentorship so sundayatelejablog.com slash mentorship go register for free if you are going to be getting three thousand dollars worth of material i mean talk for the more worth of uh, knowledge for free that three thousand in a year and this program is for five years so i mean you can do one year you can do two you can do as much as you like but it's going to be go to phd level it's going it's a program that is supposed to give you bsa B, B, I mean, BS, BSC, BA, MA, MSc, and whatever you want, you know, to the level of PhD. That is the program we have developed. So if you have not yet joined that mentorship program, you know, find your way to sundatelagerblog.com slash mentorship. Because we need to re-educate the mind of Africans and Nigerians. And this is not just for Africans, it's for everybody. We need to re-educate the mind of everybody to know that what we were taught in Nigeria is not Christianity for Christ's sake. Because some of them have never been able to travel out of the country. So they don't even know another Christianity. Or some of them have been, were born less than 40 years ago. So they don't know what is Christianity. That's why I started this mentorship program to reintroduce Christ and life and principle life to our, in our people. But anyway, let's continue with this. As a matter of fact, I condemn it. But what happened was I had to go to a couple and ask him. Look at the dream I had. I want you to give me interpretation of that dream. To say the interpretation of that dream, if you have the spirit tormenting you, then you can pray such kind of prayer to cancel that spirit. Is it that much a Muslim? Your God has no right to deliver me. Why did that thing transpire? He told me that Allah has his ways when he wants to call people. Allah chooses to call men in different ways. But, first of all, maybe Allah is calling you. I went back home. I begin to. The dream I had was recorded in my memory. I was reciting that la ilaha illallah, even when I was not pronouncing it, but it was repeating in my memory. That is how I become a Muslim. Allah, Allah. You know, you people don't even know what's going on with me right now. The shock that I'm undergoing. That this is an Igbo man, pastor. I've never seen anything like this. A pastor from Nigeria. From south, from the southern Nigeria. Okay. I have a little encouragement to give us. One sweet thing about Islam. Islam is a total way of life. Islam particularize the worship of Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Moses in Christianity was saying, um, You hear what he's saying? Islam practicalizes the practice of Allah. Islam is a total way of worship of God. The young people, they want total dedication. They want truthfulness. They want total, you know, real reality. They want truthfulness. They want uh, faith in God that is, you know, pure, that is total, absolute. Of course, nobody is perfect, but they want the pure gospel. That's what he needed. He wanted the pure gospel since he didn't see that with his pastors and his father, because pastor father is a pastor too, and his, and his Jew. He's looking for it, and he found that dedication. That total dedication in Islam. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name, we bow down before you, and we are standing. Allah. Are we not lying? Total, that is lie. When you say I bow down before you, you should practicalize it by perfect heart. That is Islam for you. I will not want to digress by what they say. So, basically what he's saying is that we want the Christianity that works. We want practical Christianity. And what our people appreciate in Nigeria, the only practical part of it is give your money. But I want to tell you, let us take away the IQ that Islam kills. When you read the Hadith, Allah says that the prophet said, that when I bow, Someone keep the law is that the person must keep, but there is a condition. 
you must make sure the weight of that knife must be as heavy as the knife they use in starting that person. You must make sure it must be exactly that point you will start that person. The quantity of blood that will rush out and the time and minutes that person dies will be the same time mm -hmm. that person will die. Mm -hmm. A man who gives such an order, did he ask you to kill or not? No. No, no, no. Is it possible to retaliate at that particular way? At all. That simply means Islam prohibits killings. That is it from the office's mouth. He's not paid. And if you listen to his speech, we discover he knows that he's actually coming from that side. And Allah has guided him. He asks, when you go to Zuba, to fly by Zuba, you see some of his posters there, up to now. Stop. Can you believe it? The man is still having his posters all over the city, hanging. But he was a pastor, he was doing crusades. And his posters are still all over the city as a pastor. And now he's already testifying with the Muslims. But stop, stop. The thing that, before I move to, before I finish with this video, you will see that he's not the only pastor who came here to testify. There is another pastor now and another evangelist who is coming here also to give their lives and to testify right now. So we are going to, we are going to uh, chat it like that, please. I want to call on uh, so, Even the one who is speaking now is a southerner. And he's not a Yoruba man. And he's already a pastor, a Muslim man. Okay. You can see, when pastors are coming into Islam, they decide to take the name of Muhammad. So, did you hear what he said? When pastors come into Islam, they decide to take the name of Muhammad. So they know pastors. Now it's a it's like a it's like a movement of pastors converting to Islam. Mm -hmm. I want to introduce another pastor, but now known as no. you see the man that is holding that is poster. You see this man? He's an Igbo man himself, or a Niger Delta man, that is holding the poster of the other guy to show that we are many. We are many pastors or Christians who are converted to Islam. You see another one now. Muhammad Igwe. So, there is another one, Muhammad Igwe. He changed his name to Muhammad Igwe. How can you be a Muslim Igwe and be Muhammad? But they said he changed his name, okay? From the same age. So, can you believe it? This is Mohammed Igwe. He's already dressing like them, even. One time pastor. And he said he was an evangelist too. You see, these are all the tragedies and the and the catastrophes happening in our country because of the atrocities of the pastors and because of the kind of doctrines we are practicing what we call christianity is not christianity we are not those people those churches that we call christian churches the popular churches the big churches they don't have anything to do with christianity they are not christian churches they are just using the name of christ all these churches that I'm going to be, and the reason why I'm just going to review, you know, all these four churches is just because they are the most, you know, uh, popular and they are the most visible. But, you know, they are, all the other ones too, they are the same. So the series I'm doing this week is going to be called Chris Oyakilome and the God of Mammon. I'm starting with him now. And then uh, the, one, the topic of today is Chris Oyakilome, the Master Manipulator. So Chris Oyakilome, the master manipulator. So that's what we are going to be dealing with today. Just a short video I'm going to show. I'm starting with a short, uh, short video uh, that we're going to analyze. And then after that, we will go to Chris Oyakilome. Like I said, everybody who is from Chris's church that is watching us now, Christ Embassy, and you come on to write some rubbish, if you write anything abusive, or if you are going to be causing controversy on the platform, you are going to be blunt.
because you are not going to distract on our platform here. I don't come to your platform to, dist to distract you. So we are going to block you. If you want to come in here, you better keep quiet. Hmm? Or you are off. If you come back again in, the, in the, another person's name, we are going to block you again. If you come 10 times, we are going to block you 10 times. We have somebody just doing that job alone. So he's not going to miss you. You are. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see this video. Now, as I told you yesterday, I've already prayed for you. And it's time to receive the answers. And today, I want to bring you a word concerning your finances. Now, the three things the Lord will do for you, because he's already answered the prayer for you. The first thing is, he's going to guide you to learn and to understand kingdom principles for your finances. How to receive it, how to get it, and then how to multiply it. And this is something that God's going to do for you. Which means, every time that the word of God is being taught or preached concerning finances, make sure that you listen and that you respond. Because true knowledge shall be just be delivered into his inheritance. So that's important. Now the other thing that the Lord is going to do for you is this. He is giving you a 21 day miracle unction. Which means in the next 21 days, you're going to have miracle money. Now you've got to let your faith open up and go up to God to receive miracle money in the next 21 days. Now this is amazing because it's already begun. And the thought thing is, when I release the anointing in prayer, the next few seconds, make sure that you receive it for yourself. So in the next 21 days, a special function is being released that you can receive miracles. Now these things happen in Bible days, and they're still happening. So get ready to receive right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release that anointing will help you to guide you to the knowledge of kingdom principles for financial miracles. And then I release an anointing for you now for the 21 day miracle money that's happening already. You can receive miracle money in these 21 days, a special season from the Spirit of God. You are blessed specially. And this is going to this is going to multiply and lead you into greater financial blessings. I thank God for you. Make sure you share this message. One of the biggest tragedies of Christianity in Nigeria is that our people are so gullible. Our people are so gullible. Our people are so deaf and dumb. Who is as deaf? Who is as blind as my people, as my servants? That is what Nigeria is right now, especially the church, the believers. I have, you know, in the in my uh, effort to prepare for this, uh, you know, series on Chris Oyakilome, the all these kind of different people, all his pastors, these pastors, his leaders, and his former pastors, present pastors, all of them are sending me all kind of information about the church, and I've read, I've listened to hours, thousands, hundreds, or thousands of hours of his messages, and the more I listen to this guy the more I'm so sad for my people because how can someone like this become a leader, a national leader in the land? I am overwhelmed. I'm flabbergasted. I mean, his intellectual level is so low. His depth is so... And then what is even, even worse than that is that somebody will believe, and his people that he has brainwashed, believe that is the best thing that could happen to Christianity, that is the greatest, is the greatest teacher. How can they even call him a teacher? How can they even refer to him as a leader? I mean, if you see what this guy is doing, I've listened to thousands of his messages right now, maybe not thousands of his messages, thousands of hours, maybe hundreds of hours. And I will tell you that, I mean, in Europe here, you know, you say some Europeans or some South Africans are following him, but because people are blinded by sensationalism, by miracles, by so-called miracles, you know, and it is, it is, you know, the people that don't have the love for truth, they will be deceived. You know, the Bible says that it sends the spirit of deception 
to people who don't have love of truth in them. If it doesn't matter if you are not perfect. Loving truth doesn't mean you are perfect. But if you are even if you are not perfect, but you have the love of truth, you will never fall into the into the hand of such a crook as this guy. And and for for people to say that you know you know they are following and dedicating themselves to him, I mean it's so sad. It means if sometimes I feel maybe God has just given up on these kind of people that are following this guy, but I know that there are still people there that you know that are honest and that are just blind just because they are not critical. They don't have critical thinking or they don't analyze or they don't notice stuff. But most of them that are dedicated to these guys, they have been they have been given up by God. I mean, because God says in first in first Thessalonians chapter two verses nine to twelve that He is He gives up people who don't have love for truth. He gives them up to deception and illusion and and, and delusion. He gives them up to the spirit of delusion and deception. So I I strongly believe that in the case in the case of Adeboye, you know, he plays a smart smart game. Adeboye is very hard to get. But this guy also plays a smart game, but he's not as smart as Adeboye. But this one is openly demonic. He's openly, what do you say? He's, he's operating the spirit of wisdom, the de demonic wisdom. Dem you know, the Bible talks about two kinds of wisdom, yeah? God's wisdom and demonic wisdom. This guy openly operates in the spirit of with demonic wisdom, you know, satanic wisdom. And people don't have that discernment. If you don't have that discernment and you don't analyze, you don't think, I mean, you have to be not thinking at all to fall into the traps of Chris Oyakilome. Look at what he said right now. And I'm sure some people are watching this. They put this thing, this is their ministry. They put this thing out openly. They are not hiding it. They are so sure of his manipulative strategies. They've never met somebody who is, is going to analyze and di di just digest and totally break into pieces everything he's saying. He's intellectually, he's so, he's so low and manipulative. He's, he's not having the wisdom of God at all. And let's, let's please, let's go ahead. Don't believe me before my word. Let's go ahead and examine and analyze all that, that short video. In that short video, I have so many things to talk about. You'll be amazed. <laughs> Let's go find out. <laughs> now, as I told you yesterday, I've already prayed for you. And it's time to receive the answers. Stop. And today... You see the manipulation of this guy? He's trying to tell people that since I told you yesterday that I prayed for you, now the God has already answered. Everything is already done. It's time to receive the answer right now. I mean, he's brainwashing people for people to believe that, oh, but he has prayed. He is the one that is close to God. He is this almighty friend of God. Anything he prays about, God has done it. So even though people might not have not might not have seen any result in their own life, but he's trying to brainwash you to make them to believe that it is done. It is it's, it's like he's the one who is the Almighty God that answers the prayer. He, I mean, when you pray, you need to wait for God to answer, and the answer depends not on you; it depends on God. Even though you are the one who pray, if God doesn't move, we are all powerless. We're, but he brainwashes people to even believe that God has moved, and if God has not moved, he is making God to move by himself. So he has prayed for money yesterday. That's what I assume because he's talking about money. So now he's saying, today now come and receive the money, miracle money. Because I prayed yesterday, today it's time for you to receive it. So he's making people to now, you know, be on a, um, on a automatic motion, you know, just being driven, not even thinking if either they have the thing or they don't have it. But pastor has said it and, you know, it's just manipulative. He's even acting God. He's acting God. I want to bring you a word concerning your finances. Now, the three things the Lord will do for you because He's already answered the prayer so, for you. You see, God has already, He is telling them God has already answered. Even though the situation of the poor has not changed, nothing has changed. Maybe God didn't even answer. Maybe God doesn't even need to answer. Maybe God doesn't, maybe you don't even need that answer. Maybe it's going to be the opposite. Maybe the answer is going to, you don't need it right now. But he said, no, you will receive the money right now. Because God. So for them to think that, oh, this is a man of God that prays and answers. If he prays, you want to get answer. No, maybe you don't need to get answer. Maybe you'll get answer later. Maybe it's going to be dangerous for you to have answer right now. Okay, let's continue. The first thing is, 
is it will guide you to learn and to understand kingdom principles for your finances. How oh. to you see the way he's speaking the right words? Is that God is going to guide you to have kingdom principles for your finances. You don't pray for God to give the people kingdom principles. You teach them for them to have the kingdom principles. But what he's going to say, and he's talking the right words, kingdom principles, but he's not going to give them principles. And you know what he's going to tell them? The principle he's going to say, miracle money. That is, is that the principle? I don't let me use foul word. He's playing, he's manipulating people. You want to give them principle for their money, Christian principles, biblical principles, and that principle is miracle money? Is, a, is that the principle? Whose, on whose intelligence are you playing like that? This is a, a, a foul, foul, foul wolf. It's a wolf. Wolf in, uh, in, in, in sheep's clothing. Manipulative, sleek, sleek, deceptive. He's selling scam and calling it principle. It's a scammer. That's why I call this message of today master manipulator, deceiver, annoying, angry. I mean, annoying what he's doing with people. He's messing up people's minds. That's why they recruit their members mainly from the colleges and from universities, because they're still young. They cannot critique what he's saying. And they cannot see the difference. They think it's on their side. They don't know it's just the whole, the whole thing is just to manipulate them and make them dependent on them. Because one should be, begin to believe on him that God answers his prayers, that whatever he says happens, that he does miracle. You begin to follow him. That is how he recruits you. What he's talking about here is a method of recruitment. It's a strategy for recruit recruition or recruiting new members that's why he's coming on tv <laughs> and the saddest thing about it is that our people just want to look at you see his hairstyle is perfect you see what they call in nigeria brand no they call it packaging yes now there is a word when i was in nigeria i never knew that word before but now you see the way he's fresh is fresh that is what they call packaging in nigeria and he knows that deception is easy in a poor country once you are well packaged, you see the tie, you see the coat, you see everything perfect, as if he's not a human being, as if he's coming from, as if he's a package, you know, from ever, as if he's not even, everything is lying right. No rough corner, nothing, everything is shining, you see? And once people see that kind of packaging, deception is easy. You can easily deceive them. That's the kind of country we have right now. Because they see, you see, everything is rich, everything talks about wealth around him. You see, all these things talks about prosperity, wealth. So they'll say, oh, since he has it, he probably knows the secret. And that's what he's trying to tell them. I know the secret. I know the secret. I'm going to tell you because he's made everything to, this is, this is called, you know, brainwashing. He has put everything. He's not natural. This is a show. He's not coming out the way he is for real. He's a player. He's an actor. He's playing. And he's, that's why you need to put, to put the whole environment in a fake way. He's not real. And not only him is like that, most people are like that. He's not, he's not, he's not a real, no human being shines like this and have everything perfect. No hair is messing up anywhere. Not in everything is just perfect. No, no human beings, are the only actors do this. When you want to deceive. And, but that's what our people call packaging. And once you are like that, they just say you are, you know, you are okay. So, so they want to be like that too. And then when you can talk sweet like him, you know, manipulate lies, then you are an easy, 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 easy you know, victim. Sorry, let's go ahead and uh, receive it, how to get it, and then how to multiply it. Stop. He said he's going to teach them the principles, how to get the money, how to receive the money, and how to multiply it. But he's not seeing anything that such at all. In the whole video, it's just two or three minutes without me, two, th th less than three minutes video. He didn't mention anything like that. And he's not planning to. He just wants to throw something out there for you to be hooked. He's trying to hook you. This is recruitment method. It's a method of slave recruitment. And this is something that God's going to do for you. 
which means every time that the word of God is being taught or preached concerning finances, make sure that you listen and that you respond. Because true knowledge shall be just be delivered. <laughs> every time a word is going to be preached about finances, you must listen and then respond. Do you know what he's talking about? Respond, of course. Because every time money is preached about finances, he's telling you to give. And he is telling that you must listen, you must be serious when it's about finances. And then you must respond. That, that is conditioning. He's conditioning the people that that is the principle. It's a principle and it's a secret of how to, you know, receive it, get it, and multiply it. You must listen to any time they come to you and tell you about money and you must give. And that's why in every meeting that this man does, they collect offering. But not only him, all over Nigeria is like that now. Anytime they meet, they have to do offering. Thieves! When I was growing up in Nigeria, people do offering only on Sundays and midweek meeting one time. Maybe twice a, a week. When I was growing up, it was even once a week. But now it's every meeting. Because every time. That's what he said. Every time a word is said about finances, you must listen, take it seriously. Not about Christ, not about the kingdom, not about doing good. Not about you know, empathy. You must sit and listen closely and respond. But about finances. That's the word. Into his inheritance. So, that is the voice of a thief. This voice you are hearing is the voice of a thief. I'm not, I'm not abusing him. I'm just describing to you what you get, what you see, what you have right now. This is the voice of a thief. That's important. Now the other thing that the Lord is going to do for you is this. He is giving you a 21 day miracle function. Stop. Look at what this guy is saying. No, no, no. Don't do the. Wait a minute. Look at what this guy is saying. You know, who is he fooling? Let me look at him again. No, look at, look at what this guy is telling me. God is going to give you a 21 day miracle option. Uh, auction. For 21 days, you'll be receiving miracles, or in the 21 days, you'll be. You're on the 21st day, you receive miracles. 21 days miracles. You want to tell me that you don't know that is a trick? And that is manipulation? And that's a scheme? Does anybody want to tell me that you don't know that's a scheme? You want... <laughs> I think I should just take it. Because I've listened to this guy so many times over the last two months that I've been preparing for this. That, you know, the Adiboy one... Is at least you you know it's bad, but it's not as bad. But this guy, he is blatant, and people are not even question it. Let me show you. Let me show you my note here. Let me show you my note. Did you hear what he said? Chris Oyakilome, the master manipulator, right? See the note I'm putting here. Why twenty one days? <laughs> Why twenty one days? Why not seven days? You know why? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because when it's 21 days, then you have to be sowing every day. Because seven days is too short. <laughs> because people will go to church all those days, and they have to be sowing. You have to be sowing to claim it. So all 21 days, your bank account will be empty. But if it's seven days, ah, that one is not profitable now, seven days. It means 21 days of daily church services and bringing offering for all those 21 days. That is the voice of a thief. Even if it's not going to be coming 21, you know, going to church, but they want to hook you for that 21 days. Even if they're not going to take your money for that 21 days, but they want to get you hooked. You must, you know, you are connected to them that 21 days because you have to wait for 21 days because something will happen. So between that time, you are being brainwashed and you are susceptible to being brainwashed by them. It is a tactic to keep bringing people coming to church. And that's another thing. So for 21 day miracle money, you keep on bringing people. You want the miracle money. And people will be staying. So they can keep bringing money every day or every time. So he is trying to make himself into a deity. That he, he, he knows, he, he God is giving you. How do you, how do you know God is giving them? Are you God? Because he is that God. He is the deity. Because you cannot decide for God. 
He is trying to subconsciously program people that he has some special powers or privileges with God. If God is going to give them 21 days, is there any way to find out if it's, is there any way to prove that? Is there any way for everybody that is watching? This is on TV, or this is not in church. Oh. So on TV, you have like billions of people watching. Now, you know the way Adiboye says it? He is very, he is very cunning. He will say, uh, God wants to give someone. There is someone here that want, God wants to give a miracle. There is someone here. Even though everybody still say, yeah, it is me, it is me. But <laughs> in his own case, he said, he is not even saying somebody. He said all of them. I have prayed for you. I have. <laughs> because he does, he's so greedy. He doesn't want to lose anybody. He said, all of you are going to give you. Uh, you know, the God is going to give you 21 day miracle. So what does that mean? What is really really doing? He is trying to make himself into a deity. He is trying to subconsciously program, because you are taking the place of God, you are a deity. He is programming them that he has some special powers. He has some special privileges with God. He is close to God in a way that those other people are not. So they have to say, yeah, 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 amen, pastor, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they will get some people in church to come out and testify and say, yeah, pastor, you remember you said that? And this is what I'm... That is what, how you make a slave camp. That is how you form your slave trade. You recruit your slaves. But let's see what the Bible says. 20, Proverbs 28, 16. A ruler who lacks understanding, he is that ruler who lacks understanding. He's a great oppressor. And that's what Nigeria is experiencing right now. Rulers that lack great that lack great that, that lack understanding, they lack understanding of the loss of, of the loss of the Bible of money of Christ. They are they lack understanding, and it's not only him. We have already proven to you that Pastor Deboye is in the same category, and all these pastors, geos in Nigeria, they lack understanding. And when a leader lacks understanding, he's a great oppressor. But he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. You think you you, you want to tell me Chris hates covetousness? You want to tell me Chris hates covetousness? You want to tell me Chris hates covetousness? No, he loves covetousness. He is covetousness personified. His whole ministry, everything about him is covetousness. And because he, is, he loves that, he is not prolonging the days of a lot of people. A lot of people are dying early because of covetousness. But he that will hate covetousness, he will also teach people to hate covetousness. Then they will prolong their days. But he doesn't teach people to hate covetousness. <laughs> so Chris, everything he does is to make people love covetousness, making them to die short, to die short of their days, to, to die early death. Early death is in that church. Early death is in that ministry. Early death is in that country because of our leaders that lack understanding. They are oppressors and they set up systems of oppression. Systems of oppression, and I'm still going to prove to you these days how what are the systems of oppression that Chris Oyakirume has set up. You are going to see even today, every day I'm going to be showing you practical system of oppression that he has put. He's an oppressor, and not only him, all these bishops and geos, they are oppressors who, through covetousness, bring people to, to the end of their lives. We know that as children of God, we are all equal before God. He is not telling them that, you know, you talk to God, you, you know, we are the same. He is saying, no, I have prayed for you. You know, God has answered that prayer. And because I prayed and God has answered, now I'm bringing the answer to you. God is going to give you, he is the deity, he is the God that's going to tell you now that God has decided to give you 21 day miracle. He is the deity. He is, but instead of teaching people to know that, no, we are equal before the Father. I'm not better than you. Talk to your Father. They are not teaching people personal relationship with God. They are teaching people to look up to them as the deity. Do these pastors want to make themselves superior to their members? Oh, yeah. And make the members inferior to them. That's exactly what they're after. What they are practicing is syncretism. Using the name of God to do all kind of evil desires of their own, some, of their own accord. Creating the illusion that people have to pass through them to get to God. If you look at that video very well, you would know that he is saying, I am your medium to God. I am the means. I am the one that will bring your miracle. I am the one standing between you and God. I will bring your miracle. You know, I spoke, I spoke to you for you yesterday. Now I have brought the answer to you. <laughs> he is the medium. He is the babalawo between God and man.
So what Pastor Sunday was, what Pastor Chris was supposed to preach about was principle like diligence. This is what will give you money, not miracle money. Not because I prayed the miracle money will come for 21 days. Not 21 day miracle money, but diligence, which is a principle. Proverbs said, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. This is a principle. Miracle money is not a principle. It is a deception. And he is telling them that miracle money will come in 21 days. That's a principle. No, it's not a principle. It's a deception. So what he was supposed to teach is principle, but he's using the right word by principles, but really he's bringing deception into the picture. Let's continue listening to the guy. Miracle unction, which means in the next 21 days, you're going to have miracle money. Now, he's going to let your faith open up. Can you see the confidence by which he's speaking? In the, one, in the next 21 days, you are going to have miracle money. Everybody who is watching is going to have miracle money. How? Who said? When? What will be the proof? What about if I don't have it? Can I come back to you and... And you know, and complain? <laughs> Will you compensate me? Oh, you know, brainwashing people, damaging people, and the belief that this is what God do. How can you not walk? So somebody will just lie down in his bed now, washing you. He will be saying, "Hey, man," and he's not done anything. He's not signed any contract. He's not work hard. He's not labored. You know why he can preach that kind of miracle money? Because he also receives miracle money every day through taking offering from people through defrauding his members. If you see the system this guy set up in his chest to get money from people, that's because money is coming to him like water, like water flowing through the tap. That's how money is going. So he's, he's, he's used to easy money. And when money is easy coming to your hand, you think that everybody has that kind of access too. You think that everybody can just get that easy money because you yourself, you are used to easy money coming. And because you, you don't know how money is made, because you, everybody just brings it to you. And because you are so used to that, you are now using that as a premise to build a doctrine that everybody now can receive miracle money without doing anything. Because you yourself, you are receiving the kind of money that you don't, you don't work for. And go to God to receive miracle money in the next 21 days. Now this is amazing because it's already begun. And the thought thing is, when I release the anointing in prayer, the next few seconds, make sure that you receive it for yourself. Did you hear what they said? <laughs> when I release the anointing in prayer, I, wow, big deal. Oh, wow, big deal. You will really release the anointing. <laughs> you will release the anointing in prayer. You will release the anointing in prayer. And people will get, let's hear that part again, that little part again. Yeah. The next few seconds, make sure that you receive it for yourself. So in the next 21 days, the special function is being released prior. The next few seconds, make sure that you receive it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. One days. Now this is amazing because it's already begun. And the thought thing is, when I release the anointing in prayer, the next few seconds, make sure that you receive it for yourself. So in the next 21 days, the special function it's been released that you can receive miracles. Now these things happen in Bible days. Sure. And <laughs> he's going he, by example, he is going to pray. You are going to receive miracle auction for miracle money in twenty in, in the, for the next twenty one days. And these things are happening. Of course, they're happening to you every day, every second. They're happening to you because you are gathering people's money, people's hard earned money every day. Oh, let's see. Instead of these pastors like Chris to preach hard work, diligence, and commitment to people so that people will work hard, be diligent, commit, be a commitment to work and productivity, they are spreading laziness, indolence, and mediocrity. Because by telling people to sit down at home and receive on television, watching you on television and receive the recoup money for 21 days, that is spreading indolence. By telling people you will just speak. I don't need to walk, I don't need to do anything. You will just be. You are spreading laziness, mediocrity. What they are preaching is to lead people to slavery, really, so that people will have faith in them. Not in God, not follow the principles of God, but greed. Greed. Lost. That is what people have. People are captivated by lust and greed. Proverbs 12 24. The hand of the diligent only rules. 
But the lazy man will be put to forced labor. And that's what this guy has called. He's causing people to be lazy so that they will work for him. They will become his slave. People who are put under forced labor are slaves. That is what is created. He, through his doctrine, he's creating lazy people who are put under forced labor to serve him. People come under their slavery to them, like during the time of slavery plantation. If it is true that he has special unction to release miracle money, why is it that Nigeria economy is in that, in that bad shape? Why is Nigeria economy in such a bad shape? If he has the miracle money, if he has the unction, why is it that he, he needs to eat himself? My God. If this man has the unction for special miracle money, why is it that he needs to collect offering again from his people? But he has, but you have the unction now to receive miracle money. Just speak or release the option on your own self. self. <laughs> All his members are supposed to be telling, Pastor, you have unction for miracle money. Why do I still need to sow into you or into the church? Release unction now. Unction <laughs> for miracle money that you already possess. Release it on your own church. Let your own church fool without taking money from the poor people in your church. Because people in Christ Embassy Church, I had stories this last week, maybe from a thousand people. I read many reports that everybody in the, almost everybody in Christ Embassy, Christ Embassy Church is complaining about money. Because they have to give all it. Everybody doesn't have enough money. Everybody have to give their last. They have to pledge. They have to do... So why is it that you are driving people crazy? You are making people to be, you know, to become poor and to become, you know, strapped of money just because you want to get their money. Why are you taking people's money? People are already poor. Our country is already one of the poorest in the world. Why are you still striping them, stripping them of their money and taking their own money from them? If you have power to make miracle money, make miracle money for yourself first. Make miracle money for your own you no know, ministry. Make miracle money for your own members. Make miracle money for Nigeria. Nigeria. Liars and thief. That's why I said that voice, the voice of this guy when you listen to him, is the voice of a thief. Is the voice of a liar. If he really has the power to release miracle money, why is he still collecting offering? If he has the power to release miracle money, why are his church members still poor? The truth is that these people just want to take advantage of the gullible people by telling them what their itchy ears want to hear. He's working, he's, he's, he's playing to the lust of the people. He's playing to the greed of the people. He's playing to the weaknesses, the weaker nature of man. He's not telling people the hard things like work hard. He's playing to the lower human nature. And he, he, he and people like him also take advantage of people's greed. Since you want to get something for nothing and thereby lose what you already have, then here you are. And all those church members, they are losing the little they have because of their greed. And they believe this kind of fraud star. This is a fraud star here. They believe in this kind of fraud star that they will give and they will receive miracle money for 21 days. And in his church, it's all about giving, 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 giving. And that greed is what has made the people poorer. Because when you give to someone who is already richer than you, or the church that is already rich, and you are giving to the rich, to the poorest, to the rich instead of going to giving to the poor, the Bible says you will come to poverty. It is this kind of pastors who are responsible for the culture of corruption in the land. So people want to be rich without being qualified for it. That's why his members are notorious for stealing from the places of their work. In Proverbs 1, 18 to 19, the Bible says, but they lie in wait for their own blood. When you are greedy for money, for greed, when you are greedy for things like that, you lie, I mean, you, you, you want to you, you destroy your own life. They lock secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. He takes away the life of his owners. When you are greedy for gain, and that is the kind of people that was uh, uh, Shimolo, no, what is his name? Or, or Yakilome breeds. He is raising a generation of people who are greedy for gain. And they lose their lives 
they fall into all kinds of stories that are not pleasant. You know, they, you know, they, people wait and wait for, they wait for them, they wait in, in secret for their blood. And those people just suffer losses from every direction. They have turned everything to miracles instead of merit. So you don't need to be qualified. You don't need merit. You just need miracles. And that's the kind of mentality he's bringing. And he's telling people that once they can get to him, they will get the miracle. Once he can speak, they will get the miracle. You don't need merit. You don't need qualification. You just need the man of God to speak. Making himself a deity, a God, a many God on earth. A small Jesus. So whereas life is based on merits and principles, not on miracles. When we say nothing works in Nigeria today, we blame the politicians alone. No, we must blame the source of value system, which is the church. These are the people who are forming the value system because people go to church. And when they go to church, it is what they hear. We become what we hear. So why is it that we cannot do things well? Because why should I do things well when I can get miracle? Why should we say we are not skillful? Why should I be skillful when I could get miracle? When God could do it for miracle? Why should I go and walk when the money miracle can come? Why should I be diligent when I can just get the man of God to speak? Thieves and rogues. So, you know, he's a master manipulator, that grace. He's a rogue. People become what they hear. Our people don't listen to politicians. They listen to pastors. We have become what the pastors tell us. We have become lazy. We have become uh, lackadaisical just because we follow their teachings. We believe them. You see, even tithe itself, it found expression at the, you know, it, it, it was not practiced. Tithe was never practiced in the first church. But we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later. Uh, uh, I will not talk about tithe now because uh, because uh, I want to show you the atrocities and the evil system that Oyakilome has set up in this church. I want to show you that uh, uh, the evil, evil. But let's go and listen to him to the end first. Let's let him finish. Let him land before we bury him. So let him die before we bury him. Or what do you say? So, <laughs> So get ready to receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. I raise that anointing to help you, to guide you to the knowledge of kingdom principles for financial miracles. And then I raise that anointing for you now. Stop. For the truth. When he's saying, I pray that God will guide you into principles of financial prosperity, he's trying to tell you that you should believe what he's saying. That miracle money will come, principles that are sowing. When he's saying principles, he's He's, he knows what he's talking about. The principle is that you must sow, sow this, sow this, give this, that once you believe that, that God will make you to believe that, that God will guide you into that principle of giving to him. So he's conditioning you. He's, so he's, he's playing on the mind and intelligence of people, conditioning them so that now when he goes to church, or his people go to church, they will now tell them this is the uh, principle of financial uh, principle of prosperity, give. You want that 21 days? Give. So he's setting up a table. He's, 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 he's setting up the people for, for him to rob them. For them to part with their money. One day miracle money. That's happening already. You can receive miracle money in these 21 days. A special so, season from the Spirit. Anybody who is talking about miracle money, you should just know that that's a fraud. This guy is a fraud star. I mean, and when I'm talking like this, people think I have something against people. No, I don't have anything against them. But it's just very annoying. The way this guy plays on the intelligence of the people. Anybody talking to you that you don't need to do anything, you just get miracle money. It's a fraud. Okay. God, you are blessed especially. And this is going to, this is going to multiply and lead you into greater financial blessings. And thank God for you. Make sure you share this message. I'll bring you more work tomorrow. God bless you. And you see the way he's smiling, he's so relaxed, he's, and he knows that people will believe him. Is that voodoo money? You know, this kind of miracle money mindset is what is making people to go to Nigeria and be looking for a sacrifice to do, to have miracle money. Because that miracle money concept is idolatry. 
is idolatry. It is satanic. It is, um, it is, it is uh, paganistic. It is the wish doctors that tell you that they can make miracle money come. You know, they will tell you to go and bring sacrifice of this, bring sacrifice of that, that they will make miracle money to come. Have you ever heard that they will do money medicine for you? And since pastors are now becoming witch doctors, they are now talking about miracle money. Miracle money in, in the, in the uh, local raw understanding of Nigerians is uh, ritualistic money. It is, uh, you know, money rituals. It is, you know, money rituals. And that it is what the, the deceptive, you know, bl you know, juju or black magic people used to do, or uh, you know, or uh, what do you call them? Yeah, witch doctors used to do that. The one that are deceptive, would they just do? I will do sacrifice for you. I will do medicine for you. I will do juju for you. I will make it. I will, you know, you will get miracle money, you know, money, money making miracle. I mean, mir mir miracle money. That is exactly the juju. That that is the concept that these people are using, because he, you know. So, you know, he's miracle money. He's talking about miracle money because if they are getting that from Babala Wars. They are getting that from witch doctors. They are getting that from, you know, from, yeah, witch doctors. They are getting that from evil spirit. They are getting that concept from the God of Mammon. This guy doesn't know God. He knows another God. And the God that he knows is the God, the God of Mammon. Is dictated, he's hearing information from God of Mammon. Because what he said in the beginning is that he's going to teach them financial kingdom financial principles. And kingdom financial principle is miracle money. That is not kingdom of God, that is kingdom of darkness. Because the same principle of miracle money is existing in the kingdom of darkness. So it's a parallel thing, only they speak it in English now. But in Nigeria, if you go to Africa, there is always sacrifices, there is always you know terms of miracle money. That same thing. So for you, is is it is it is clear that they are, it, he belongs in the same category as the witch doctors. They do the same thing. They practice the same thing. Those ones speak their local language, local dialects, but he is speaking English. And some gullible, gullible, gullible young people are following this deceiver. Now it's time for me to now show you where the mo your money is going to, okay? Let me now show you the system that Oyakilome has set in place, has put in place. I want to put, finish on time so that people could call in. I want to show you the system that Oyakilome has put in place to deprive people of their money. This guy is a master manipulator. He built such a system, you'll be scared. In fact, this whole 10 series is not enough for me to come up to you to tell you all the evil things this guy does. All this, the system, the evil system that this guy has put in place will make Pastor Adeboye to look like a child. Will make Oyedepo to look like a baby. This guy is totally, totally demonic. Let's go into it. He's not the minister of God, though. Let's read. Interesting facts about Christ Embassy Church. All Christ Embassy Church, Embassy UK, Churches are now referred to as believers' love word, as AS, there I go, as believers' love word. In church, they did not explain really, you know, so you remove this, told us. I'm working with my Russian people here. This, this is what, this is what, they are pastors who to get in touch with me. They wrote this to me. So that's why I'm re it's coming out like that. They did not explain to them really what they are now called, why they are now called, why they are now called Believer's Love Word. The Charity Commission, were in, the, the real thing, I will now tell you the real reason. So you embassy, of, I mean, you Christ embassy members, they didn't tell you why you are now called Love, believe, love Word Believers in the UK? I will tell you why. The reason is because the Charity Commission, were, were, you people were under the investigation of Charity Commission since 2014. The government appointed an officer. This is a way to deceive the, gov the British government. Because the British government appointed an officer to take over the affairs of finance in the church. So that is why, you, did you hear the news recently that the Christ Embassy UK became bankrupt? And the reason why it became bankrupt or in aid or closed is because they were, you know, is to avoid and to run away from this 
government inspector to say that, oh, we are closed down. But really, they didn't close down. They just changed the name to Believer's Love World. This the Believer's Love World is their, organize, is their, is their outreach something. But they now call the church like this. And they say the church is, the, the Christ everybody is no more in the UK. Because they need to avoid the sanction of the government. So that the finances will still keep on coming. Let's keep on hearing. Shortly after the church lost the venue in Bermondsey, London, where church members contributed thousands of money, which means it, it has disappeared because it is, they don't want the government to take it over. So uh, the money will have to be transferred to somebody, to, uh, to this uh, love, love world. Instead of following through with the investigation by charity commission, the church decided to create a company, Believers Love World Limited. Members were told not to pay their checks for tithe and offering to Christ's embassy because if they pay, the government will see it if to Christ's embassy. But they are, they are now supposed to pay to this other organization so that the British government will not know their money laundering activities. So to pay, uh, the, the, not to pay to Christ's embassy that they should now pay to Believers Love World. On several occasions, they were told, members were told to leave the check blank can you imagine it? That you should leave your shirt blank and leaving many brethren unhappy because if you leave it blank, it means they cannot do anything they want with it. The church may have deliberately bankrupt, you see, deliberately bankrupt Christ Embassy UK and moved all financial activities to Believers Love World Limited. And it's a company limited. So they will now not, they will not have anything to do, you know, the government will not know because they will think this is a business organization. And the register is not as church. The register is not as commission, but as business. So that the money, the government would not even suspect. Why should a church register as a limited liability company? Why offerings? They are not doing any business. So <laughs> all their business is coming from people. Why offerings going to the company directors? The, the, money, the, the money is going to the company directors. It seems the church is running, running as a company at the expense of the members. In Christ's embassy, apart from tithes and offering, the members are being taxed to sponsor what, what they call rhapsody of realities, healing school, and all forms of arms, all different arms of the government. Now, the Bible says, take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them, otherwise you have no reward from your father in heaven. Nobody should see what you are doing. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be, they have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you that they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sits in secret will reward you openly. At the end of every year in November, there is a partners conference where people receive awards for the highest givers, which is in direct conflict to the words of Jesus. How can you be receiving an award as the highest giver when Jesus said nobody should know what your right hand is doing and your left hand is doing? You want to tell me this is the kingdom of God? What Chris is doing? It's not the kingdom of God. It's not, he's doing exactly opposite of the kingdom of God. He's doing exactly opposite of the word of Jesus. He is the king. He is the God of his own kingdom. And this is the kingdom of Mammon. He is, a, he is, he, he, he is their own God and Lord there, not the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastors want to receive, and these pastors, they are like zombies. They want to receive these awards, so they pressure their members to give because they want to be the highest givers. And members want to be called up, and members too want to be called up to receive awards, so they employ all sorts of tactics, asking someone in church office to tell them. So church members will be keeping friends in the church office to tell them who is the highest giver, who has given more than them, so that they can give the person. This is how money is rushing into the pocket of this God of Mammon, I mean, this uh, servant of Mammon who calls himself servant of God. Because they all want to be rewarded and uh, recognized. What God said, what is an, it's an abomination before God. You know, the honor, what is highly regarded in the eye of man is an abomination before God. That abomination, people are lining up to go and practice and do against the word of God. Because they don't even think about it. They don't even think about these scriptures. They just think anything, you know, Chris tells them is the Bible, is the truth. 
They respect the word of Christ more than the word of Jesus. The word of Jesus is not authority to people who go to the to, to Christ Embassy Church. It is the word of you know Pastor Chris that is the final authority. So Pastor Chris established a system that makes them to do against the word of God, and they don't even notice it because they have been so brainwashed, they don't even question anything. So members want to be called up to receive awards, so they emp employ all sorts of tactics, asking someone in the church office to tell them who is the highest giver so they can give more to claim the top spot. The target for one zone alone, there is a particular zone that somebody got in touch with me, and they have so many zones in England alone. One zone, let's say in one zone, they have maybe five churches. I don't, the, the, the guy told me, I can't remember. These five churches have to come up with 200,000 200,000 for healing school. And this is not a one time something, it's a regular thing. That is the amount they have to always come up every three months or every six months. That's about 98 million naira. I wonder why such have to pay, why people have to pay such to, I mean, I wonder why people have to pay for God to heal. God heals without anything. Freely have you received, freely should you give. When they are already giving tithes and offering, why can't they use the tithe and offering to organize the schools? Maybe they even people even pay for the schools who attend. But apart from the attendees, church members, every church member, I mean, this thing that is that is put on the church, the church members are the ones who have to, who have to come up with this amount, two hundred thousand. That is almost cut of a million dollars for one zone alone. So if they have ten zone, that's two million dollars. If they have, uh, you know. 100 zones, you know, that's $2 billion just to do a uh, rhapsody of reality or healing school. Only the healing school will get to rhapsody now. For rhapsody, the ministry wants to distribute free this year. Their target this year is 1 billion rhapsodies for 2018. 1 billion. They want, and they, they, spon they have to be sponsored by church members. That is, each church is tasked with a target to realize that vision. Something that could be made available online for free. Something that you could just put all these wraps online for free, like I'm doing now. I put my all my material for free on the internet mentorship. Sundayadilajablog.com uh, slash mentorship for free. No 200,000. Now, if you don't know what this means, 1,000, one, one where is the calculations? You didn't put it. We want one billion rhapsodies. Oh, maybe we're going to see it in France. Okay. Uh, you will see the calculation. Okay, you see the calculation here. Each rhapsody is two pounds per rhapsody. And one billion copies equals two billion pounds. No dollar. Two billion pounds church members have to come out for it. Just for rhapsody alone. That is excluding this in new school. Which is going to be about two billion also by the time they, they collect from all the all the world two billion pounds as well. That's just from England alone. Two billion. I mean, I mean, uh, that's this one is from England, but but maybe around two billion or something from England or two million from England. Then for absolutely from all the churches, two billion pounds. Why can't they create projects like building, building hospitals? And you two billion pounds will build the, the, the best hospital in the world in Nigeria. We don't have one. Two billion pounds, you know, can build the highest, the best building in Dubai. But we don't have it. Infrastructures in the community are not there in Nigeria. Even in the place where their churches are located. But they ask members to give towards that end. It is all about the name and empire of Chris Oyakilome. You know, each rhapsody is... Two, two pounds times one billion copies, two billion pounds, all that money has to come from church members. So they charge them. They give them targets. Money is shipped, and this money is shipped and small good through their private jet and things are different ways and through their companies. They ship them from the UK to Nigeria in hard currency. Now, where is all that money going to? Where is all that money going to? That money, look at this guy. His name is Desman Oyakilome Wagiren. Look at him here. This guy here is the adopted son of Chris Oyakilome. Oyakilome doesn't have a son, biological. He has two daughters. But this guy is the son of his sister. 
And this is the guy that he is grooming to succeed him. So they call him CEO of Carrel Conglomerate. Now let's go. This is there. This is there. This is Chris himself. This is the guy. What is his name again? This man. This is this guy. These are they uh, again here together. Father and son. That's his father. Father and son. You see, he's receiving the award. See the guy? They put all this in the internet. They put this guy in the internet like this. Look at what he's doing. And you know the way they are promoting, he's, he's promoting himself spirit, money, emotion. Of course, spirit, money. When you are getting two billion dollars, two billion pounds from church members, of course you will have spirit, money. <laughs> Anybody will have spirit, money, emotion. Money is just flowing like water upon them. Of course, when you are getting 200,000 pounds from each zone, just for healing school, of course, money will flow. Spirit, money, motion. And they are showing him and promoting him as a star. They are saying he's a multi-millionaire, even though he's just 20 years old or something, maybe 21. And they are saying, you see, he's making the money. Of course, he's making the money. When money is flowing like water like that, see what he's doing. He's not even disciplined. He's not even well taught. Why should you be displaying money like this? Pounds. Do you see pounds there? Pounds telling. US dollars. See? The money that... <laughs> the money that poor Nigerians are getting. <laughs> Look at what they are doing with it. And it's a spirit money in motion. The secret to wealth is simple. Sponsor the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of course. That means give. They use the word gospel of Jesus Christ to enrich themselves. Millionaire, rich, money, car, Jesus, entertainment. And he's just a musician. He's a sort of music director. And, he, and they're saying go sponsor. But God, they are acting on the greed of the people. They are using the greed. That you want money like this too? Bring, give your money to us. Give your money to us, but that's it for Jesus. But you see what it's for? Lifestyle. See, it, 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 that's his company, Karel. This is Rolex here. See the Rolex? This, this Rolex might be costing $40,000 or $200,000 or, two, you know, $100,000. But you see, maybe he's the one drinking this. I don't know. I think they drink it over there. See what he's writing. He, he's, he's displaying this. not a shame. This is coming from his page. Spirit, money, emotion. After a long day, wealthy, good life, cool, entertainment, light, follow, rich, wine, you see? He's not denying that it's wine. Cash, like this, Karel. And some people are working like Mumu. Like Nigeria, we say that Mumu, some, uh, Mumu uh, monkey, they walk. Bamboo, they shop. Bamboo, that is what is going on here. All these members, so-called members, are walking like crazy. They are killing themselves. And he is buying jets. They, they are doing something. All kind of evil. Ah! The evil in this one is surpasses the evil of uh, redeemed. Like 100 times. This is just first day. I'm just showing you first day. By the time I get to the second day, third day, you will cry for your people. You will be crying the way I'm crying now. You will be so emotional the way I'm emotional now. See, they don't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Their work is just to tell stories, fake stories, and get you to part with your money. That's their work. And they say he's a millionaire. He's a millionaire. He's working. He's, he's, well, see, what he's doing? Sleeping on money. Sleeping on money. I said, oh, you know what he's doing? The Lord shall supply all my needs. That's what they tell people. That is the Lord. Of course, the Lord shall supply when everybody is giving you. When all the church members are levied and they are bringing, you know, in the billions on a regular basis. Of course, the Lord shall supply. And they will give them, you, they will give you scriptures. You go and get scriptures. You go and be quoting scriptures while money is coming to them. You are giving them money and they will give you scriptures. Mm -hmm. See what's happening. That's why some people are emotional. See what this guy is doing. See. I, see. I mean, these are drug dealers who behave like this. 
I don't say he's a drug dealer. He's not a drug dealer, but the, I think it's not, I hope he's not a drug dealer, but it's sheep money. Why, dro why do dro drug dealers behave like this? Because they have sheep money. It is sheep money that makes him to, to, to behave like this. When you have sheep money, of course you have to display. See, a small boy like this using Rolls Royce, 20 year old, and what Greece is telling them is that he made the money himself. He's a big businessman that has made, you know, you know, billionaire. How many years have you been working? Not, I mean, you are not 20 years old. How old are you? And how long have you been working? You've not been able to come up with a Rolls Royce like this. And 20 years old, how many years has he worked? How did he make the money? Where? Where did he declare the tax? Who did he pay the taxes for? I mean, two. Oyakilome and the God of Mammon. If you are still doubting that Oyakilome is not a man of God, that is a is a is a is 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 a kingpin in the kingdom of darkness and a representative and a and a servant and a servant of the God of Mammon. I don't I don't, I don't think I don't know what you have to do with your mind. Oyakilome and the God of Mammon. Chris Oyakilome, the master manipulator.